welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all having a lovely day. First thing is first, I would like to apologise for my lengthy absence. Um, I've been quite unwell. I had some sort of flu, coldy, fevery thing for a while. Then I was a little bit better for a few days and then I got chicken pox. Um, you can still see the remnants on my remnants, reminiscence, remnants. I don't know. You can still see um, some of the scabs and things like that on my face. I'm better. I'm no longer infectious. My fever's gone. Things are going back to normal, but um, I was quite unwell. And yeah, that's basically where I've been, is in bed, ill. So apologies, but not much that can be done about that. But I'm back. I'm better. It's all good. And today I thought that I could do a video on my top tips for living with endometriosis. Some of these are to do with managing symptoms. Some of these are to do with getting it diagnosed, doctor's appointments, life generally. I've just put together what I would consider like a guide to living with endo or with endo symptoms. I would like to put a disclaimer out there. I'm not a medical professional, so none of these are medical advice. So my first tip is this, keep a symptom diary. Now this is particularly important if you haven't been diagnosed yet, but to be honest, it's good for everyone. It allows you to keep track of your symptoms, what you experience on what days. And it means that if there's any triggers or things like that, it's much easier to identify them because you are writing down when you experience what symptom, what you were doing at the time. And it just really gives like a clear picture of what's going on with your body. Symptom diaries are also really useful if you're going to the doctor, perhaps for the first, second, third, fourth time, whatever it might be, having something in writing is helpful for them to understand maybe how bad it is, or like I said, what can trigger your symptoms. My next tip is another tip for doctor's appointments, and that is always write down a list of questions or things that you want to raise. Doctor's appointments can be stressful as hell. So sometimes we forget things, especially if you've got the old brain fog going on. And having a list in advance just means that there's no way you're gonna forget anything that you wanted to talk about. I feel like doctors sometimes can also rush you a little bit. So having a list just makes sure that you get all your points across and that they can't sort of shoo you out the door. My next tip is one that I have heard quite a lot, and that is if a doctor refuses to refer you or to try certain treatments, ask them to record their refusal. I personally have never done this, but I know a lot of people advise you to do that because it just documents the fact that they decided not to give you that extra piece of help at that stage. And it might also encourage them in the future to give you the referral or whatever it might be. The next piece of advice, again, this is, might be more relevant to those who haven't been diagnosed with endometriosis yet, and that is check the NICE guidelines. If you check the NICE guidelines, you can see what the doctors should be doing, at what stage they should be referring you, things like that. You could even print them out and take them with you. But yeah, definitely give the NICE guidelines a read just so that you as a patient are aware of what should be happening. My next piece of advice is for dealing with the symptoms and that is don't be afraid to take medication. I feel like there's still quite a lot of like pill shaming and things like that going on but you know what some people need medication to function and that is completely fine. Obviously you need to speak to your doctor to try and find a medication that works for you. Different pain meds work differently with different people. What might work for you might not work for someone else so I really can't give advice on that. That's something that you need to speak to your doctor about but please don't be afraid to take pain relief when you need it. Your next tip is one that we've probably all heard a million times over and that is heat. Heat helps so much and it's so underrated. I mean, it's not gonna get rid of your pain by any means, but it really does help. So maybe you have a hot water bottle, an electric blanket, there's um, sort of electric, I don't even know how to describe them, like electric things that you can strap around your tummy that now heat up, like with an on and off button. 
I'm not making much sense, I apologise, but you know what I mean, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, you can get those little sort of bean bags that you can put in the microwave and heat up, those are really good, like there's so many different options for heat and heat therapy really does work. I personally also, if I'm in a lot of pain, sometimes I just stand in the shower and hold the shower head at my tummy and I find that quite helpful. Some people might like hot baths, whatever it is for you, but I do recommend using heat. My next pain management tip is a TENS machine. Now, TENS machines don't work for everyone, but they might work for you, so it might be worth giving it a go if you can get your hands on one. They send out small, like, electrical impulses, and that helps deal with the pain. I'm not sure if it acts like as a distraction um, for your brain, um, but I think it blocks the sort of pain receptors that you might be feeling a bit, and I think that's how it works. Don't quote me on that. I might need to Google that. But yes, I do recommend giving those a go. I personally find them most helpful when they are attached to my back, um, lower back specifically. I'm not quite sure why. I sometimes do apply them on my tummy, but generally, even for my tummy pain, I find them more helpful on my lower back. My next tip is something called BU period patches. Now I will pop a link in the description box below. BU period patches basically have a bunch of oils and things like that in them, which at, like they create this like cooling tingly effect. Honestly, every single flare up I use these. Again, they won't get rid of your pain, but they really do help. And I wouldn't knock it till you've tried it because I did used to doubt it. And then I tried it and I was like, and no word of a lie, I use them every single flare up. My final pain management tip is a little bit different. This is massaging the pressure point on your lower back. So on the very bottom part of your back, just above your bum, um, right in the center, there's a little pressure point, which if you massage, and I like to like really get my knuckles in there. It is a pressure point that I believe is also used to help relieve labor contractions. And when I'm getting my contraction like um, pelvic pain from endo, I always ask someone when they when it really like builds, I always ask someone to rub that pressure point. Um, it really gives me relief and it's I find it so interesting that um, a pressure point can have that much of an impact. I think it just helps uh, like my muscles sort of relax a little bit in that whole region. So I do recommend giving that a go. The next thing is something just to be a bit aware of. And this is the fact that excision surgery is generally considered the gold standard for endometriosis. A lot of doctors, especially doctors who aren't endo specialists, still practice ablation, which in some cases is appropriate, but Please just be aware that generally excision surgery is considered best because the reoccurrence rate of the endo is much lower with excision than it is with ablation. If you think about it like this, ablation surgery just burns off the surface layer of the endo, whereas excision surgery actually digs the roots out, if you like. My next tip is make sure you're making informed medical choices for you. I feel like a lot of doctors um, like to push things like hormonal pills and contraception on you when you've got endometriosis, which definitely helps some people, but it's not for everyone. It can have really nasty side effects for some people. Like with me, for example, it had a massive impact on my mental health when I went on the pill. And I just want to remind you that you should listen to your doctor, you should talk to your doctor, but you should also do your own research and get second opinions from different doctors because it is ultimately your body and it is ultimately your choice. And just because a doctor says you should try something or do something, it doesn't mean you absolutely have to if it's something you're really not comfortable with. So please make sure you are making an informed decision that is right for you. And finally, I just wanted to say there's so much support available, whether that's online, for example, on Instagram. There's a whole load of people and accounts that are dedicated to endo or people living with endometriosis. And there's a real community there. There's support groups on Facebook that you can always join. You could look at charities such as Endometriosis UK. I will pop a link for them in the description box below. They hold support groups in certain areas. And I just really want you to know that there is support out there. There 100% is. And you don't have to deal with this alone. When I started my Instagram, it was initially just for endometriosis. And 
best decision, one of the best decisions I've ever made because I have met so many amazing people. I've had so much support and found such an amazing community over on Instagram. And it has made going through all of this health journey stuff a million times easier. So yes, that was my rundown, my quick list of tips for living and dealing with endometriosis. I hope you found them helpful. And as always, if you've got any other tips, please share them in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I promise that I'm back, so I'll be posting regularly again. Keep your eyes peeled for more content coming soon. I hope you all have a lovely day and I'm sending you all lots of love. Mwah!